To set up the FAF 1.5 sewing machine to do free motion quilting will be very similar to setting it up for embroidery. So before I forget, I want to make sure that I lower the feed dogs, take off the accessory box, reach behind the machine, and push the feed dogs towards the inside of the machine so they're lowered. That way there's no extra movement that is reaching across the bottom of the fabric. Also, we need to take the screwdriver and loosen and completely remove this ankle. So you're gonna unscrew that. Set this aside. Sometimes I like to actually store it attached to a presser foot and then it's actually easier to find in my accessory box. Next, put on the embroidery foot. We're going to use that for the quilting part of this. Make sure that the arm is above the needle screw and that everything kind of comes into position here. Next, lower the needle down slightly and it'll help the foot align to the hole a little bit easier. And then once you get the screws started on the left side here, finish by tightening it with the screwdriver. You don't want that wiggling loose while you're free motion quilting. Uh, not, not, a good, not a good option. Okay, bring the needle all the way back up. Make sure you're on stitch number one. And that is about as easy as it gets. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna switch over to some variegated thread so we can look at tension and make sure we're getting the best result possible. So the idea is with free motion quilting to move the fabric at the same rate of stitch length that you want it to achieve. Now that is uh, something that takes a little practice, but I'm gonna show you a couple tricks and then we're gonna also take a look at tension. With the variegated thread in the needle and my solid color in my bobbin, that'll be a little easier to talk about so we know what we're looking for. Okay, so make sure that your presser foot is lowered. I don't think it actually sews if it's up. Nope, it doesn't. So that's a nice little safety measure, but if you forget to lower it, it will remind you. So as you start to stitch, what you're looking for is a nice rhythm to your hand movement. You don't want the stitches to not be too small and you don't want them too big either. All right, so let's see where we're at. I'm gonna use the thread snips and then that way we can just pull it straight out. So as we take a look at our tension, we wanna really look for stitches on both sides of the fabric that pretty much don't let me understand or see what side I sewed from. Now I do see a little bit of my top thread back here, so much that when I run my fingernail over it, I can hear the little bumps. So that means too much of the top thread is being pulled to the back. So I wanna tighten up my top tension just a little bit. So this is fairly normal, it, especially when you have two different, I do have two, two different weights of thread in the machine. So this is probably something really common. Now before I start changing the tension, notice it started at 4.4, and I'm gonna go up at least a whole number, so 5.4. If you just touch the, the up, arrow once, you don't really see much change. So definitely go up a whole number. Sometimes if I need to, I'll go up a, a number and a half. All right. Once we get the tension set, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of work on getting a cruise control and help you work with some of the exactness of getting your um, stitches to turn out nice. Uh, much better. I, I can see a little bit of the color thread on the, on the back, but that's within range. You do want a little bit to show back there, so that's actually quite a happy place. Um, actually, without even lifting up the presser foot, I could slide my fabric in and out, so that's a nice little bit. All right, so now that we have the tension set nice, one of the things you can utilize on this machine is your speed control. So by finding kind of maybe a halfway point or maybe a three quarters of the way point, Stepping on your foot control all the way and then working to match your hand movement of your project so you have nice even stitches. If you get going too fast and don't move it, you get lots of little tiny stitches. Those don't look good. If you sew too slow and move too fast, you get long, long stitches. So what you're trying to achieve is something in the halfway point where you're moving the fabric, you can hear a nice smoothness of the stitches as you go. Now, I have, over the years, become a better free motion quilter with practice, and I know that's what everybody says, but below this YouTube video, in the links, we have some recommended online 
craftsy classes. I love craftsy classes. I'm a craftsy instructor. I have two classes myself, but I will also watch other instructors and I have learned to machine quilt and I've, I've come a long way. So I highly recommend take a look at their numerous amount of free motion quilting classes so you can start your own free motion journey because you have the machine with the space, you have great lighting, and you have some things that will help you become a better machine quilter. The other thing that I highly recommend is that you have your machine in a sewing cabinet. So right now, mine is, it, this is just on a table, so anything big is going to drape over and be kind of a gravity issue. But if you have that machine sunk down in a cabinet, number one, you're at a much lower level of your hands. So you're down here instead of up here. And then also everything's nice and flush, and that project will just glide over it. That also has helped me quite a bit. So free motion quilting, it's just a practiced, learned art. Use your uh, speed control to find the rhythm that works for you and try out a couple craftsy online classes for free motion work.